All right, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Laurie Ledley, the founder and president of Valley Sleep Center from the East Coast to the West Coast is what we're doing tonight. I have Soda here. We're both uh, sleep educators. So this is exciting to hear from somebody else. Um, tonight, we're gonna be talking about cool your racing mind, sleep your best. So I'll let you take it from here, Soda. All right, you're on mute, Soda. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm used to jumping right <laughs> so you know, My name is uh, yeah. Soda Kowski. I am a sleep health educator and a certified sleep coach. I am located in Western New York. So I have been in the field of clinical and behavioral sleep medicine and education for the last 15 years. I started uh, my business about five years ago it's called Start With Sleep. So we really serve as a community resource um, for sleep health education. And that really came from being inspired working in the healthcare system. I really saw how many people had challenges and how they struggled to really understand, you know, how to get, you know, good quality sleep. That's, you know, how well you sleep. So I decided to do something about it. I wanted to be on the preventative, proactive end of healthcare. Uh, so I opened up my organization and we provide, you know, seminars for corporate wellness initiatives. Uh, we do uh, training for healthcare professionals and we do some uh, work with some school systems as well. So today, I'm sorry, do we have some uh, questions already coming in here? Okay, so don't worry about those. I'll, I'll get to the, actually, why don't we just tell everybody in the webinar, I will get to your question and answers after Soda's done with her presentation. So people are just chatting like, thank you so much. Welcome everyone. Yeah, so don't worry about the chat. I got you. I'll be your moderator. Okay. All right, perfect. So, um, you know, one of the things that I love doing is, you know, collaborating with organizations. And when Ed came to me to put together this presentation, I was really excited about it, you know, because there are, there are a lot of products that are coming to the market, right? But people don't understand necessarily how to use them, how they apply to their situation. And when it comes to our sleep, we really need to be able to focus on what the root cause of it is, right? So, because when we're looking at our sleep from a holistic perspective, there are a number of things that could be going on, right? And when we don't sleep well, or, or when we do sleep well, I'm sorry, we know that there are a lot of benefits. I don't have to sell you on a good night's sleep. We know that it helps with our focus and our concentration. Uh, it helps to reduce anxiety and stress, which is really important, especially during this time. It helps us to improve and stabilize our moods, but it also helps to keep, you know, our immune system strong. But alternatively, when, you know, when we get too little sleep or low quality sleep, it can compromise our health in a number of ways. So it can lead to decreased uh, brain performance and increased likelihood for depression. And it can lead to a long list of, uh, you know, additional, you know, chronic health conditions such as diabetes and, and high blood pressure. And I'm just gonna pin this here so that I can, okay, perfect. So these are the faces of sleeplessness. Can you identify with one of the individuals in these pictures? You know, and if so, on this next slide, I have a number of statements and I wanna, I want you to ask yourself, do you feel that any of these statements are true to you? Do you often feel tired and stressed out during the week? Do you have a hard time falling asleep? Uh, do you wake up throughout the night? Do you have a hard time turning off your thoughts? And do you often feel unrested from your sleep? You know, sleep quality refers to how well we sleep. For adults, good quality sleep means that you're typically falling asleep uh, within, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. It could take upwards of 30 minutes as we get older, um, but we're sleeping soundly through the night. And if we do wake up, that it's still only taking us about 20 minutes to fall back to sleep. But um, when we don't get enough sleep, it can lead to sleeplessness, right? And it's often because of our work schedules, you know, work obligations, uh, our social calendars. You know, many Americans do not get the recommended amount of sleep. So according to the National Sleep Foundation, that recommendation is seven to nine hours per night. But the thing that's really important to understand is that that's merely a guideline. It's really based on your individual needs. I tell people, you know, we don't wanna be getting less than six hours per night because there's a number of things that we need um, there's another, a number of things that can happen to us physically and mentally when we sleep less than six hours per night. Um, but 
making sure that we're, we're falling within a spectrum of six and a half to nine and a half hours. If we're sleeping excessively, that could be a sign that there's something medically significant wrong, significantly wrong with your sleep. And you might want to speak with a, a sleep specialist, but it's really about finding your individual, you know, needs, you know, where, when it comes to our sleep, um, you know, there, even though the recommendations are seven to nine hours, there was actually a study um, that showed that it actually varies by gender. Um, there was a Dr. Jim Horn, he is a leading sleep expert in sleep science. And he actually concluded on average that women need about 20 more minutes of sleep compared to their male counterparts, because we tend to be multitaskers, which means that we're using more brain power. So we actually need about 20 minutes additional sleep. And when it comes to figuring out that recommended amount of sleep as well, we wanna also be equating that time it takes us to fall asleep. So all those things are very important. You know, um, this is often, you know, because women tend to be multitaskers, we have a lot going on as well. We are, you know, twice as likely to suffer from issues with insomnia. So that's trouble falling asleep, uh, trouble staying asleep, waking up too early or not feeling refreshed in the morning. And that's due to a number of issues. It can be uh, stress, nutritional deficiencies, environmental factors, and hormonal changes. And I'm just going to touch briefly on some of those today, just because we have a short amount of time, but I think it's important to know all the things that happen and why, so that we can make better decisions when we're building our daily framework. So, you know, because of the insomnia issue that we have and the sleeplessness issue that we have, and the fact that sleep is growing to be this global epidemic, you know, this can often lead to the overconsumption of uh, pills, whether it be over the counter or whether it be prescription in nature, we're seeing this number rising. More people are taking prescription medication. Um, they're taking over the counter medication as well. And it doesn't get, you know, studies show that it doesn't get to the underlying uh, issues when it comes to our insomnia or our sleep challenges. You know, the most successful outcomes actually come from develop, developing a framework. And that's what I want to talk to you about today in our, our, brief, time, our brief time together. So it's really about understanding that we operate on a 24 hour clock. So there are a number of things that can go into that. You know, it, we can go a long way in optimizing both our sleep and our health if we do things like determining uh, our chronotype. So our chronotype is our own individual biology. And there's actually a sleep doctor, a sleep uh, psychologist, who actually recently um, went into collaboration with, with Ed Therapeutics as their sleep advisor. So he offers online this quiz called The Power of When, which is really great because when you think traditionally about maybe the early riser or the night owl, maybe you didn't necessarily feel like you, you, like you fell into one of those two categories. You can take this quiz and it'll really help you understand following and honoring your own circadian rhythm. So there's a reason why we like to wake up early or sleep in late or go to bed late. And there, you know, there's a whole science that goes behind that. So I encourage you to take a look at that. So we'll drop it in the chat box, but that is the power of when. So when it comes to, um, you know, developing this framework, it really starts with having a consistent pattern and organizing yourself around a daily rhythm. You know, going to sleep and waking up at the same time, you know, a fixed wake time helps to build a strong desire to sleep throughout, you know, uh, wakefulness. This sleep drive gradually builds and shortens so that we know when to go to sleep at night. So when going to bed or waking up, waking up in the morning is one of the most important, like waking up consistently at the same time in the morning every day is important even on weekends because that's gonna help us build that sleep drive so that we know when to go to bed at night. But when it comes to you know, that framework and that 24 hour clock, we often do a lot of things throughout our day. There's small decisions that we make that actually have a huge impact on whether or not we're able to fall asleep and maintain our sleep throughout the night. One of the first and most important is regulation of light. We really underestimate the power that it has. So the first thing that you should be doing when you wake up first thing in the morning is going to the window, going to the front door and taking in that morning light. That first 10 minutes is so important to kickstarting your circadian rhythm. And the thing is that first 10 minutes actually equates to about four to six hours of afternoon light. So it's also important in the production of melatonin. So the things that we do during the day often affect, you know, they affect the, our ability to sleep at night as well. Again, at the noon hour, taking a walk or going outside and taking in that natural sunlight. What we often find is people will wear like their sunglasses when they go for a walk, but it's very important that we take in that, that natural sun at that time as well. And if you are someone who uh, tends to be more on the early riser, 
uh, where you, you're waking up before the sun rises, you can use something like a light therapy lamp because it's very important to take in that light first thing in the morning, whether it be that artificial or that natural, of course the natural is gonna be better, but based on you know, what your schedule is, you wanna make sure that you're incorporating that. And then, you know, at the night and nighttime and evening, we want to make sure that we're limiting artificial light. We really underestimate, you know, the issues that we have. Oftentimes, you know, it's because clients are picking up their cell phones and they have that close proximity to their face. It's within inches, that blue light that emits. And, you know, that suppresses our body's ability to produce melatonin. And that can, can lead to taking an extra hour, an extra two hours, or not being able to turn off your mind. So light is really important. Taking an assessment of your environment, especially like the, the lighting in your bedroom should be amber, like an orange in color. We wanna make sure that our sleeping environment is completely dark. So blocking out any little light, because oftentimes we'll find people will wake up in the middle of the night and because they have a night light or they're looking at the alarm clock or they're picking up their, you know, their phone and they're looking at that bright light, that in turn is turning on that clock and then you're not able to fall back asleep within that period of time. So light is very, plays a very powerful role in helping us manage that 24 hour clock as well. Hydration is another important one. You know, we don't think about the fact that water leads to so many different things. When we don't get, when we don't consume enough water, we tend to feel, you know, sluggish. It can lead to uh, issues with headaches. If you're waking up in the morning, um, you know, and you have headaches, during the night, we lose about a liter of humidity through our breath. So the first thing you should be doing is taking, like drinking a, um, a cup of room temperature water first thing in the morning. That's the, one of the best things that you can do. When we don't drink enough water and we're dehydrated, that can also lead to a lot of dryness in our nasal and our, and our mouth passages, right? So that can lead to snoring as well. And it also helps to flush out excess cortisol levels. So that helps us to manage our stress as well. And then, you know, with symptoms of restless leg syndrome, um, it can help relieve that as well. So water leads to so many different things. You know, our, our body is 60% water. Our brain is like 75% water. So it's very important that you're making sure that you're maintaining hydration because it also helps to maintain our, our, our body temperature as well. So, you know, Temperature is equal in importance to regulation of light. If light isn't, you know, thermal environment is one of the most important factors that can affect uh, human sleep. We don't think about the fact that everything in our bedroom is a tool, right? So when we're going into our bedroom, our sleep sanctuary, everything in it should be to promote sleep. And we should be also leaving everything, you know, outside of that. So your bedroom should be a clutter-free space. I tell people, even if you have a laundry basket in the corner, put it in the hallway. If you're using your room as a workspace, you're going to want to make that separation. Use a different room during the day and kind of swap out. You know, um, people who are working from home right now, if they have to use bedrooms because there's children that are home that are uh, doing homeschool or, or remote learning, switch bedrooms so that you're not equating your space with work or with school. So it's very important to create that separation of space. So it should be clutter-free. Um, everything in our bedroom, you know, if you don't do, if you don't dust any other area in your home, your bedroom should be the area that you're dusting because there are a lot of uh, dust mites and you know airborne allergens that we don't see. If you sleep with a pet, uh, making sure that you're washing your sheets regularly because all of those things can also affect our breathing patterns. So the air quality in our room uh, can be compromised. But in terms of temperature, you know everything from uh, the pajamas that we wear on our person. They say actually sleeping. Uh, you know, with nothing on is actually the best in terms of helping regulate our body temperature. And there are now um, uh, pajamas that you can wear that actually help with that thermal regulation. Uh, making sure that you're picking breathable sheets, that percal cotton is, is the best, most, most breathable. Um, a mattress, you know, some mattresses, uh, the materials that they're made of can actually trap heat. Um, so especially for women, uh, menopausal women, right? You know, 75% um, have issues with like hot flashes, right? So if, if you're living somewhere like I live in Western New York and we're gonna have snow as early as tomorrow, um, you know, if you're wrapping yourself all up nice and warm and we wanna be cozy, right? That's gonna affect our ability to fall asleep and maintain our sleep. Because when it comes to, uh, you know, temperature, our optimal sleep environment should be between like 60 to 67 degrees. According to the National Sleep Foundation, uh, it should be about 65 degrees. But of course, this is gonna be something that you're gonna also wanna experiment with. Uh, because you have to find your ideal temperature. People run at different, you know, temp poor body temperatures. So you're going to want to find, you know, what is the best for you to find that sweet spot? Because we want to be able to fall asleep and maintain our sleep throughout the night. You know, um, 
when the room temperature rises, our sleep quality suffers, uh, you know, causing the number and duration of wakings to increase. And that, you know, decreases both REM and deep sleep. So temperature is very important to the quality of our sleep as well. Hey, Soda, sorry to interrupt you. Um, there's a bit of a interruption in the microphone. I don't know, are you on a, a, a string? Uh, we hear tapping when you're talking. Like, no, your, I'm, I'm, your I'm not even touching anything. Huh. Okay. There's tapping? Yeah, it's better now. Um, yeah, yeah it was no, all, I don't. Okay. It was almost like what you were touching, like you're touching your micro, um, um, yeah, I don't know what your microphone is, but it, it's picking up some kind of tapping, but it sounds better now. Um, sorry, I just want to make sure people could hear what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. That, can you still hear it? Uh, I don't hear it now. Carry on and I'll, I'll interrupt you if I hear it. <laughs> okay, sorry. So temperature and sleep quality are closely linked. Um, when a person is falling asleep, skin temperature rises while core uh, temperature decreases, and the reverse is true for waking. Uh, any disruption in this temperature shift can lead to a disruption in sleep patterns. And like I mentioned, during menopause, women actually suffer, they have 75% uh, suffer from hot flashes during this time. So temperature is very important to that, making sure that you're, you're regulating you know, the temperature in your room and everything that, that you have around you so that you're not trapping that heat while you're sleeping. Another important thing is daily movement, you know, earning a good night's sleep. Exercise promotes a higher quality sleep, but the timing of that workout is really important as well. If you're working out uh, too close to bedtime, that fires everything up. So that's where you might hear that recommendation where you want to wait like two or three hours before you go to bed. But again, if you go to that powerofwhen.com and you figure out about your chronotype, that's a great time, that's a great way to kind of understand when's the best time for your body for you to work out. I actually recently changed mine uh, to 6 to 7 p.m. at night. I knew that that kind of honored my chronotype type, but I made my schedule fit it. And it's made such a difference in how much deeper I sleep. Even though I don't have trouble with sleeping, when I work out in the evening, it helps me sleep that much deeper. And that's what we're looking for is we want to make sure that we're getting as deep of sleep as we can for that physical and that mental restoration. Are we still hearing the tap? <laughs> no, uh, it's much better. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I don't know what happened. Um, so a national survey found that 55% of people who did yoga found that it helped them get better sleep and 85% say that yoga helps them reduce stress. So while most people might be averse to yoga, they don't realize there's different you know, variations. When we talk about yoga, when it comes to stress, it really has to do with that restorative component where you're holding poses and you're making that mind body connection. So it's just a great way to release a lot of the stresses from the day. Because um, as we know, most people don't manage their stress very well. Um, we have a number of things that trigger us throughout the day, whether it be, you know, you're waking up to a piercing alarm sound, right, which that, that grogginess that it leaves us with can actually uh, stay with us for four to six hours later. So uh, consider maybe changing it to a nicer, softer tone or, or using like a light simulator to wake up. But we're triggered by, you know, an alarm clock. We're triggered by, you know, if you're turning on the news, if you're driving into work, there are a number of things that cause us to have stress throughout the day. Even when things aren't present, they, they can cause triggers in our body. And what happens is that we tend to hold a lot of that tension in our forehead and in you know, our jaw and our neck and our shoulders. So remembering to breathe throughout the day is really important. I tell people as simple as just taking a daily pause. We wanna be inhaling through our nose and as we exhale, we wanna be releasing different parts of our face, right? And if we're doing that two to three times a day, when you go to get into bed at night, you'd be surprised how much more relaxed you are in terms of like your mental stress and your physical stress, because we're working through that throughout the day instead of holding it all and then deciding that we're gonna try and wind down right before bed. So it's just something important to note. One of my best uh, recommendations and that I tell people is the use of aromatherapy. If you've never tried aromatherapy before, it's the essence of flowers and plants. And I love recommending it because unlike prescription medication, it's not addictive, it doesn't impair functioning, and it can help us with a number of things from you know, combating uh, uh, mood, depression, and anxiety. Uh, it can help with uh, invigorating us. So there's different essential oils that serve different purposes. You know, one of the most common that 
that people are familiar with is lavender, right? So there was a study that found that inhaling lavender before bed increased a percentage of deep sleep known as slow wave sleep. And that's where our physical recovery happens. And that was, we saw the benefits in both men and women. Uh, it increases stage two sleep, which is a light sleep, but we spend about 50% of our time in light sleep. This is where we're easily awoken, um, but it increases that as well. And it helped to relieve stress and anxiety because it helps to calm the nervous system. So there was a study that showed that in, you know, inhaling it decreased blood pressure, heart rate. It helps again with managing skin temperature and it has all the necessary ingredients for a good night's sleep. Um, it reduces those anxious thoughts uh, by altering, altering uh, brain waves. So lavender is one of the essential oils that's actually been studied the most, and it shows that it helps to calm our brain waves before bed. And then these are some of my favorite. You know, when it comes to clients, if they tend to have you know, racing minds, restless th thoughts before bed. Bergamot is the essential oil that I'll always say, you know, is a great essential oil to diffuse. Um, this picture here is a diffuser. You're basically gonna put a, just a little bit of water and you're using anywhere between one to five drops of that, that bottle that you see there in front of you. And basically what it is, is it emits a mist and it's gonna, you know, it invokes your sense of smell and in turn, it can um, change your mood. Uh, cedar wood is great because it stimulates the pineal gland, the brain's uh, limbic region, which promotes the release of melatonin. And melatonin is that hormone that regulates our sleep, right? So being exposed to that light in the morning helps with that as well. Being exposed to natural light helps with serotonin, which in turn synthesizes into melatonin. So all those things are interconnected. So cedar wood helps us to fall asleep, improve our sleep quality, and makes uh, us feel more energetic uh, during the day as well. So frankincense is a grounding essential oil. Uh, I always recommend to people you can put a drop or two in your lotion for like your face or your body. It's what Cleopatra used to use. Or you can put a, a drop or two into your bath water and it can be a nice addition to like your bedtime routine. But my favorite of all of them is Ylang Ylang uh, because it helps to reduce anxiety and stress before bedtime by inducing a sense of calm and relaxation. But it also helps to combat negative emotions. Um, you know, I, we don't have a lot of time today, but you know, practicing gratitude is one of the best things that you can do. Studies show that people who are optimistic tend to sleep better at night as well. Um, so something like this can help to change and stabilize your mood. Um, it works as an antidepressant, but it also helps to promote uh, happy dreams. So it's got all of those, those nice little things included in there. And then the last thing I just want to note is that the Diet and the foods that we consume should really be to promote good sleep as well. Um, they should be packed with essential minerals and vitamins, especially vitamin D, 50% of the population tends to be deficient in vitamin D, uh, magnesium, and then iron. Iron, of course, helps to transport oxygen through our blood. And we see people that struggle, struggle from chronic fatigue syndrome uh, when they don't have ample amounts of iron in their system. But with magnesium, about 90% of the population is magnesium deficient. So it is a mineral that comes from the earth and we can get it from a number of different uh, food sources, things like avocados, uh, spinach, almonds, pumpkin seeds, and dark chocolate. So especially because women um, are affected by fluctuations and hormonal changes due to you know, uh, puberty and perimenopause and menopause. If you're craving dark chocolate, that's a good indication that you probably need uh, a magnesium supplement. But of course, you always want to speak to a healthcare professional because there are a number of different uh, magnesiums and they're all meant for different functions, for physical recovery, um, for relaxation. So you want to make sure that you're taking the right one and the right dosage. Uh, but this is just a great way to get it into your system. You know, it helps to activate the parasympathetic uh, nervous system and that helps, you know, counter the, the fight or flight response. So it helps us with regulating melatonin, um, our melatonin hormone, which of course, again, is the hormone that regulates our sleep. Um, but it also helps with uh, managing cortisol levels, high blood pressure, restless leg syndrome, and a number of other different things. There are like 300 biochemical reactions. So it's very important to make sure that you have uh, ample levels of magnesium in your diet as well. So even though you know, I've brought together all these different recommendations and these quick tips you know, that, that you can really, the choices that you can make and changes that you can make in your daily schedule from regulation of light, making sure you know, you're taking in that natural light and avoiding artificial light, making sure you're staying hydrated, um, getting the right type of physical activity, especially during the right time, uh, regulating you know, the temperature in, in your home, the humidity and the air quality, you know, 
my last recommendation is why we're here today, and that's to talk about um, the new device from Ed Therapeutics. And what they've done is they've actually uh, created a device that that is really rooted in the, the root cause of sleeplessness for most adults, and that's overactivity in the frontal cord cortex, which leads to a racing mind. So the, this device is called the Cool Drift Versa. So it is a non-drug solution to sleepiness. So those who are not desiring to use any type of sleeping pills, and like I said, there's a lot of natural things that you can do to support your sleep, but this is one of them. Uh, this new device, uh, is ultra portable, so it's great for traveling. I've tried this device myself. What I think is great about it is that you can actually sit with it on the couch or before you go to bed and you can really incorporate it into your wind down routine versus like having to get into bed and lay down. They do have uh, one I'm gonna show you in a moment that, that they have for the bedroom setting, but it's just versatile and designed by, by being able to do that. And it has a 10 hour battery, so it's, it's pretty great. So it's perfect for relaxation and perfect to take with you, you know, on an overnight trip or, or just to be able to move around the, the home. I actually have brought it to my office and I've used it as well. When you're looking to kind of calm your mind and you have a lot going on, I actually use it as like a mental wellness tool as well. So I think it's, it's great in that respect. So some of the things I just want to mention about uh, this device as well, um, it was created primarily for those that are seeking relaxation, those suffering from stress-related sleep issues, and those who've battled, you know, had long-term battles with issues with sleepiness due to, you know, menopausal difficulties and hot flashes. Um, some of the great things about it are most people who use this device actually see results within two days. I know myself from the first device I use, even this device, um, it's pretty quickly, you can feel the effects. Uh, it's non-habit forming. One thing to note, because you might say to yourself, well, you know, this thing is, what it does is it, it has, it emits this like cold kind of compress that has like a temperature that helps to uh, relax the mind. But in terms of like consistency, because you might think to yourself, well, I could just use a, a cold compress and it would do the same thing. But there's a lot of science that actually went into this. And when you do things like use like a cold compress, what you don't realize is you can actually trigger like the pain receptors in your brain because what we want to do is we want to keep it at a certain temperature because remember temperature is very important. So this tool helps to put that science into action. Um, you know, it's a scientifically validated therapy and it also provides you with five different temperatures because again, everyone has different sensitivities to temperature. So you might want to start off at the lowest level and then move up depending on your comfortability. So it's just something uh, important to note about that. Some of the uh, feedback that has been given in regards to this product is that 80% of users actually, uh, they're able to fall asleep faster. 80% uh, report improved sleep quality and 70% actually report feeling alert the next morning. So, it's, and you know, the main is that people with uh, sleeplessness actually reach a deeper, more restorative sleep um, faster and they sleep better across the night, which is really important. Because when we're talking about sleep quality, we want to be able to fall asleep. We want to be able to maintain that sleep. And when we wake up in the morning, we want to feel as though we've actually gotten refreshing sleep and we feel restored mentally and physically. And that's the thing that's important to note as well. A lot of times people will sleep, you know, they'll be able to fall asleep and maintain their sleep, but that sleep is compromised, you know, um, throughout the night, they're not realizing how restless they are. A tool like this can, can most certainly help with combating that. And then their original model is called the Cool Drift Lux. Um, so again, this is a non-drunk uh, solution, an alternative to um, any type of over-the-counter prescription pills. Um, it is a wraparound band, so it's a lot thinner than the travel device, and it actually has an external unit um, that has an alarm clock that's built into it. So you can see here, it actually has uh, the alarm clock that you can set, and this actually dims uh, once this has been set. So this is one that you can use in your bedroom setting, and this is one you can use more for the portability. So if you're interested in this product, uh, this is the website for Ebb, and I believe that uh, Lori is gonna drop some information in the chat box as well in regards to how you can um, purchase it. Lori, are you there? I am, hi. hi. Sorry, I was answering some questions. Um, so while I drop the, uh, the link to purchase Ebb through Valley Sleep Center, uh, mm -hmm. we will get to your 
question. So, Soda, um, I'm going to draw the winner here in a second, but someone wants to know, uh, curious how that uh, cool drip versa feels when you're laying on your side. Uh, you know, I I use it laying on my side as well. The one that is the the bulkier one, you know, obviously like it's not going to be for someone who sleeps on their stomach, but laying on your side is very comfortable. Um, this the full unit here because this is a thinner band. I find that that's very comfortable that you can wear that consistently throughout the night with any kind of disruption. Um, but I think it would really be more subjective depending on the type of sleeper you are and how often you're moving around, uh, which one would be more appropriate for you. And then what about uh, people who have a CPAP? Yeah, so this was actually designed uh, with that in mind as well. So I think the one that is the nightstand is the one that's the most appropriate for that just because it's it's not as cumbersome. Um, but again, you can use the travel one uh, as part of your wind down routine before you're using your CPAP machine. Because what it's doing is it's changing that temperature so that you're able to reach you know, the, the place where you're able to fall asleep and then maintain that sleep because you're setting yourself up before. You recommend using it before you put your CPAP on and then we'll be ready to like wind down and go to sleep. We don't need to use both the CPAP and the verse at the same time. I, I would say, I mean, the one that's the, the, the nightstand, the Lux, you can actually use that with the CPAP machine. I know I've, I've heard people say that they use both in conjunction. So I think it would just be a matter of if you feel claustrophobic or if you're able to do that. Some people actually with the strap, um, and I've done this, you can, it's meant to go on your forehead, but some people pull it over their eyes so you can, it actually doubles as a sleep mask as well. So if you have, um, if you have like the cannulas for the, um, the, the nose pieces for the CPAP machine, but if you have a full face or nose piece, I'm not sure um, how comfortable that would be. But again, I think that would be subjective to the individual. So the Lux is the one that you need a prescription for, right? No, so there's two okay. different types of the nightstand. So I'm only talking today about the consumer products. They do have a prescription uh, Lux version for um, those who have been diagnosed with insomnia that you can get through a sleep specialist or your sleep doctor. So you can. Okay. So if any of, any of you want that, um, you can uh, put the chat, valleysleepcenter.com, and you can see a specialist to get that. And I want to, um, can you look at the Q&A soda while I draw the winner of the, Absolutely. I'm only going to say your first and last initial, just for privacy protection. And if anyone has any uh, questions about the tips that I offered, because I know we had very limited time today, so I wanted to make sure that I hit a bunch of them very quickly, but I'm happy to expand on them if you have any additional questions. All right, so the winner of the Versa is Mitchell B. So I will email you to tell you how to get that um, product. So congratulations. I wanna say um, thank you so much, everyone who's attending. Um, there was a couple questions about working night shift. Um, great question. I mean, I worked night shift for years. Wouldn't you just put it on before, you know, in your bedtime routine? So if you get home at 5.30 in the morning, you're going to have the power down hour where you prepare yourself for bed, right? And go ahead, Soda. Well, when it comes to uh, shift work, we tend to, if you're working, you know, uh, during, uh, the night and you're sleeping during the day, your sleep is already going to be that lighter sleep. So I think with this, it would you would use it the same way you would with your your um, your sleep routine. So depending on when you sleep, because I have some shift workers where it's like they take an hour and then they they sleep, or I have some that actually stay awake and then they sleep later on in the afternoon. I think it would be based on like what their sleep schedule is. But I would definitely use it in in that respect because I mean it helps with calming your racing mind. So as it is, we're more alert during the daytime, regardless of our schedule. So I think this is, is a great tool for them. And this is not covered by insurance, but if you have an HSA card or a health savings or some kind of program where you can use your, your dollars that you put away, you can use it for that. Um, how about weighted blankets? I would love to do a segment on weighted blankets, Soda, if you... No, so when I do my, my presentations, like I said, they're generally like... Uh, an hour to, to 90 minutes so that I can really kind of spread out. So weighted blankets have been found to be great for people with restless leg syndrome, um, people who suffer from anxiety. So traditionally they used to say that it should be like 10% of your body weight, but I, they say 12 pounds across the board. The thing that's really important uh, to note about the, the weighted blankets is that breathability. When they first came out, um, they're great, right? But 
if they're uh, made of materials that are trapping that heat, that body temperature is very important, right? So we don't want anything that's trapping the heat because of that in turn is like, it'll initially help us fall asleep, but it's not gonna help us maintain that sleep. So I think it's just making sure that you're purchasing one that is made of the right materials. Great. Well, thank you everyone for attending. If there's any last questions that we can answer, uh, we're going to say goodbye for now. And I really appreciate your time, Soda. And thank you to Ed for, um, you know, giving us this amazing product. I'm excited because I'm a breast cancer survivor. And so uh, insomnia and hot flashes have been a big part of my life and a lot of uh, my fellow fighter warrior sisters out there. So it's exciting that we have something that can help us Cool our racing mind. Oh, absolutely. I've, I've seen a number of studies that have, that have come out, people who are on chemotherapy and how cold therapy has helped them. So I think that this would definitely be a beneficial tool for that demographic. All right. Well, thank you again. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Soda. Thank you.